Good day, everybody. This is John Scarborough doing a little cattle move this morning. Um, seems like after that ice storm, I've, I've had so many people in this area has been calling me to fix barns and just do all kinds of work. So I've been working almost full time and it slowed me down on my cows. But I do appreciate the work and the income. Um, it seems like you always get the work when you when you don't need it as much and then you when you do need it you don't have the work so i'm not going to complain about it but i tell you what it does do having all this extra work is it's made me appreciate that much more uh not having to have a full-time job while trying to run this operation because it would be fairly difficult and really it, it's people like y'all subscribers and customers that allow farmers that are trying to do um, trying to be honest and trying to raise a good healthy product it, it's people like y'all that actually help us to be able to do that because um, without being closer and having a little bit more time it can be difficult to do that um, but I, I, what I wanted to talk about this morning I wasn't going to just talk just a whole lot but you can see this pasture here um, and of course there's some weeds in it we uh, we do try to be as organic as we can um, because that's something our customers appreciate and that's something we appreciate. Um, but you can see it's diverse. I don't know if you can see it out there. I don't, yeah, I doubt you can, but there's actually quite a bit of clover mix. It's buried down in the grass and there's quite a bit of mixes all out in here. But what we're seeing here, this is a pasture that they've been pulled off of for just a little bit now. Um, and what we're actually seeing here is, uh, I'm getting a little bit distracted guys. I'm seeing a cow down there and they're not supposed to be in this pasture at all um, so actually i'm going to do something different while y'all are on the camera y'all get to see some live action here uh, i've got to stop these cows get back girls get back and i've got to actually change directions with them i'm gonna have to put them back into a pasture they've already been in um simply because somehow or another we got a cow and i don't know how many cows in the wrong pasture and once something like that happens, uh, like I said, this is on the spot. This is on the fly. It's, it's happening right now, and I just figured out about it. But when something like that happens, you see a cow that you didn't know about that's in the wrong spot, then you really sh should consider running your herd in there because you don't know what else has gotten through. You don't know if there's, there's a cow's calf through there. You don't know what it is. So I actually made a mistake. I did something I didn't want to have to do just now. I ran them into a pen that they just got off of about two weeks ago. Now, I am just, I've been just pretty much tip grazing. <clears throat> so it's not really going to hurt it. It's just not my favorite thing to do. So I'm going to go on through this video as if I did not run them into this pasture and as if I've run them into this pasture behind me because that was the plan. Okay. But I had to do that because we've got to make sure that all these cows get to their calves. Um, like I said, I don't know where, whose cows, I mean, I know whose cows they are, but I don't know where they come from uh, down there. So I've got to run the herd in here to make sure that nothing is missing its calf. You can't ever do that. And the best way to find a calf is for the mama to find its calf, uh, if there is a new calf. And there are one or two of them in here that are supposed to still uh, have some calves uh, coming. So that's something I had to do real quick. Uh, just make a quick decision i may regret it but nothing i can do about it now but uh long story short the plan was not to put them in here okay so i'm gonna go back to what i was talking about the plan was to put them into this other pen behind me and this would have been about grazed about two weeks ago which is not ideal to be running them back in here but that happens that's real life for you right there okay man that calf right there is really starting to grow off that calf is not that old it's starting to grow off good uh he'll make a good he is a steer so but anyway um anyway so back to what i was talking about so what what i'm looking at here is that most of the winter grass has been grazed down pretty good bit so there's a mitt there's a, a a balance here this time of year what you see is, is there's a lot of winter grass and you're right in the stage, that in-between stage where the winter, winter grass wants to come to seed. And as soon as it comes to seed, all of its nutrients drops back away. So you're not really giving them any nutrients, but then the grass will just pretty much die because they don't want to eat it. 
and it can be uh, when that happens if you get a huge amount of winter grass that just comes to seed and then dies there's not a whole lot of nutrients for it there's some carbon but there's not a whole lot of nutrients and they won't eat it and it kind of inhibits the growth of the summer grass coming on now if that grass were to die before the seed head comes out then that's actually uh acts as a fertilizer to your uh to your field is high in potassium and things like that i think it's potassium and phosphorus that is high in and then it's got some uh some nitrogen in it so it's a decent fertilizer but if that comes to seed then it's not so there's a balance at this time of year <clears throat> that you have to hit um, you have to make sure that you do not have too much winter grass but at the same time this rye grass is an annual so you really want it to seed it's you really want it to come to seed uh, so that you have winter grass for your next year and that you don't that saves you a lot of money and time I don't have to come out here with a tractor and seed these pastures every year um, I think there was one pasture I seeded uh, once and that was on my that was on my place where there was some woods in there I seeded that um, but all of these other pastures I've never had to seed and I continue if it gets better and better because I let some of it come to seed so how I manage that is I will go in and I'll graze them and they'll eat quite a bit of that win that winter grass but I have to do it just right I have to uh, have their speed just right moving just right and I've just messed it completely up by doing this right here so I will have to do something to fix it but the so the ideal thing is you know this is the real world so you don't always get the ideal thing but the ideal thing is is to get it right about this point you see some seed heads in here I don't know if you can see that or not we'll try to view in there you can see some seed heads but then there's a decent amount of it that's grazed down okay We'll view back out there if I can. Well, yeah, there we go, okay? So there's some of that that has come to seed and that's okay because all of it hasn't come to seed. I would say they've eaten about 70, about 70 to maybe 75% of the rye grass down. So what will happen now, we're almost to the end of the winter grass growing season and you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's some summer grass starting to grow right in there and that's all out in here it's low it's about three inches right now which is another thing you want to be real careful that's why you don't want them in your fields too long like they are right now because they will graze your summer grass down to nothing once this starts coming to seed that all of a sudden that summer grass becomes more tender and they'll start grazing that down and it never gets a chance to get get up so it's a fine balance you want that to have a chance to get up and get growing but at the same time you want the winter grass to get grazed down enough not to come to seed but i find that i like about a 70 to 75 percent of it that they've eaten and a small percentage of it that comes to seed and they usually do that just fine by themselves you want to give them much much larger areas this is an 18 acre pasture this is a little bit larger than i would like I like between six and 12 acres <clears throat> with <clears throat> with the 30 cows and then uh, I think there's 12 to 15 steers and then a few cats. So with that amount that and in my area, that works pretty decent. You'll just have to figure that out for yourself. But the point is, is it's a, there's some clumps that are coming to seed and then quite a bit of the rest of it has been grazed off. Um, so what that will allow is a little bit more growth out of that winter grass just a, the last bit of growth otherwise it would have gone dormant by now this stuff will go dormant the stuff with the seed and the rest of it you know will actually become still palatable food for probably another three weeks to a month okay and it, the, so that's why you want to run them fast through there okay so what that gives us is when they come back to this pasture there will be some small places about 30 percent of grass that are still high but they're dead and brown okay but they've come to seed the cows won't eat that they'll just kind of trample it here and there okay and then that's about the time when you might implement some mob grazing to knock some of it down or you might come out here with a bush hog but before that you don't really i don't really like to do that okay but at that point then you've you've made a, a perfect environment because now you're actually seeding your ryegrass and you're allowing good growth for your uh, summer grass. Well then, so the next stage is kind of, you're still kind of moving them a little bit faster. I, I mentioned some mob grazing uh, if it's necessary, but at that point you're still implementing uh, some fairly decently fast moving because now you've got your summer grass growing 
and you want it to grow as much as it can while you're still in the rainy season. Okay, we're in May right now, um, but then once I'm once I move forward to the summer grass transition and the winter grass going out, that will actually be close to June by then. Okay, <clears throat> so then we still got a little bit of rain throughout June, not a huge amount, but we've got we've got perfect conditions for growing summer grass usually. Uh, a decent amount of rain, but not all rain, okay? So after that, you still wanna move your cows fairly fast uh, in order to give that summer grass as much chance to grow as you can. Once you get to the hot, hot summer, mid-July and into August, that's when you wanna really start slowing them down um, and then go from there. But anyway, that's a, that's a video for another day. What I really wanted to talk about was allowing some of your winter grass to come to seed so that you don't have to seed, reseed your pastures, but not allowing all of it to come to seed. That's why you want to move fast so you get to that next pasture. You go from one pasture, you eat, you know, you, you graze some of the, the heads off before it comes to seed. Uh, you're giving them lots of high energy and then you move quickly to the next pasture. And you'll get a lot of gains during that time too. You move quickly to from pasture to pasture to pasture. And during that time, you have to depend it on, I mean, it has to be depending on how fast the grass is growing. But I have actually had the grass growing so fast that I have been back to a pasture within two weeks. Okay, that didn't happen this year. Um, but in other words, I have completely circled the farm within two weeks, okay? uh because the the grass was growing that fast so the point is is that normally it takes me 45 days to 60 even up to 70 80 i have been up to 90 days before i came back to a, a field depending on how fast or, or slow it's growing but in the springtime i am flying and sometimes it's difficult to even get the cows to want to move uh from pasture to pasture that fast um but it's ideal if you can. So just remember that it, when you're trying to manage rye grass like that, if you can get it to the point where there's some seed head sticking up like that, but about 70% of it has been grazed off, then you move them forward. And if you can get it like that, then that's really good management it, from what I've seen. My point is I've had really good luck with that, with uh, always having more winter grass without having to reseed it. Uh, but at the same time, the, the rest, you know, while getting good gains on my cattle during that time, while also getting good summer grass grow up. Because a lot of times what I've seen people do, is other a lot of other farmers and stuff, is they will take and they will graze that ryegrass all the way down and then move them to the next pasture. Um, but when, for me, when I do that, what I see happening is, first of all, I gotta reseed the ryegrass. Uh, but, but secondly, well, and secondly, I start to see more flies and more parasites sooner. Um, but then thirdly is <clears throat> you, you don't get nearly as good growth on your summer grass. Okay. Because you, it doesn't get the start that it needs because they're knocking that down too. Uh, and then, well, I don't remember. There's several, several points for it. But for me, I, what I have seen is the best possible thing is to just keep them moving as fast as you can during this winter stage um, winter growth stage uh, and I say as fast as you can like I said you want to be watching it because if they have left most of that ryegrass behind uh, obviously you do want them to tip a decent amount of that so um, anyway guys I just wanted to throw that out there some quick tips didn't want to drag the video out too long uh, make sure I get it all in there though um, but the cows are fat and happy they are very very healthy and I am very happy to be able to run this business and sell a good grass-fed organic product. Uh, we are not certified grass-fed or, or, or certified organic, but because um, it's difficult to get there. Um, but we do practice all of these things, and that's one reason why we put these videos out here, so that our customers can actually see firsthand the way we, way we graze uh, and the meat that they get to eat. Um, so just remember that, guys. Try to Try to buy from people that are are local and that you can actually see their farm and actually see how they're raising their animals um, that's that to me is is the best way that you could buy food but be careful by doing that because there's a lot of people nowadays in our day and age that are trying to just get rich from it and basically they're just buying on a bunch of bunch of cows and just selling you who knows what um, so just 
you know make sure you can actually go out and see what they what they've got you know make sure it's something that you actually know something about uh if you're going to spend that extra buck if you don't have the extra money to spend you know to buy um higher quality food then that's perfectly that's perfectly fine but if you're going to spend the money to get something better then actually you know look into it and make sure you're getting what you are being told you're getting so anyway guys thanks so much uh i hope that everybody is having a wonderful day i know that i am so don't forget to like and subscribe